uh, step number one. But don't leave thinking that um, insulin release is all about, um, it, the insulin release is all dependent entirely upon what the blood glucose levels are. Um, that's one stimulus to the pancreatic beta cells to trigger release of insulin. But you can see that we have to recognize there are other ways that we can bring about a release in insulin. Um, so pathway two, this is just showing us that within the digestive tract, um, there are cells that also have receptors for glucose. And the, when glucose binds to those cells, they are activated to release these uh, hormonal products called cholecystokinin. So that's like a gut hormone. We're not gonna talk a whole lot about that. Maybe in the digestive system, uh, we'll tackle some of the digestive system uh, hormones. But let's think that now we're getting a lot of this cholecystokinin produced locally in the gut in response to the um, ingestion of glucose in, in the meal. And then this is showing us that cholecystokinin, um, it does transport by way of the blood, but it transports to the pancreas where it can uh, turn on the beta cells probably through some different pathway than we looked at previously, but we know that ultimately the beta cells have to depolarize and that we have to have vesicular release of our hormones. So it's probably not gonna be the exact same pathway we looked at before, the one triggered um, by glucose metabolism, but through some other mechanism, we're gonna allow for calcium to come into the cell and we're gonna get the release of the insulin. So that's a kind of a locally acting hormonal pathway. And then pathway number three shows us that there are also these other sensory neurons um, within the walls of the digestive tract. So when you consume a meal, obviously you're bringing the, the meal into like a tube-like structure of the intestinal tract. And there are a population of stretch receptors found in the wall of the digestive tract. So the meal is gonna stretch the, the digestive tract, activate those stretch receptors, and then they're gonna send information to the pancreas by way of some neural pathway um, one thing that the digestive system has its own intrinsic nervous system, it's called the enteric nervous system. And that explains why you can, you know, take an animal, you can like snip out uh, segments of the intestine and set them out like on a Petri dish or a tray and you can stimulate um, contractions or you can see that the, the little di segment starts contracting on its own. And you know that that's the same thing you can do if you take the heart and you cut it out of the body for a short period of time, the heart will continue to beat because it has its own intrinsic electrical system to maintain the beat for a short period of time. But the digestive system is similar to that. It has its own intrinsic uh, nervous system. All right, so those would be the other two mechanisms um, to keep in mind that regulate insulin release.